What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Algorithms and Data Structures tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about the stack data structure, a very simple data structure that is used for function calls and recursion. And in today's video, I'm going to explain to you how it works and what the runtime complexities are. So let us get right into it. So let's talk about the basic idea behind a stack. A stack is essentially uh, the exact thing that the name suggests, a stack of data units. So you can imagine a stack to be something like this, where we have a lot of packages, a lot of data units, a lot of whatever this is uh, stacked on top of each other. And this essentially means that we have a stack of data. Now what we can do with this stack of data is we can push new data on top of it. So we can go ahead, create a new data unit here, a new package, and we can push it on top of the stack. And we can also go ahead and pop the uh, element at the top. So we can go ahead and say, okay, take the element at the top of the stack and process it. And alternatively, we can also go ahead and just uh, peek at the stack. Uh, I'm not sure, I think peek with double E, not with EA, because peak would be like the top point of something. Uh, however, this is what you can do with the stack. You can push data on top of it. We, you can pop the last element um, from the stack out of the stack and then process it. Now, this means that a stack operates in a so-called first in, last out, or last in, first out principle. So philo or lifo or lifo, whatever. Uh, this essentially means that what enters the stack first leaves it last and what enters the stack last leaves it first, which of course makes sense because what we do is when we push an element on top of the stack, so let's say we push, let's say this is a red box here. What we do is we essentially put it on top of the stack. So now the top element is this red box here. And when we pop the element, what we get is the top element, so the red box here. Um, so usually we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the queue data structure in the next video and uh, priority queues as well. Um, but essentially, you know, a queue, an ordinary queue, works in a different way. You put in an element, and what gets first, uh, what gets into this queue first, leaves the queue first as well. With the stack, that is not the case. What enters first leaves last, and what enters last leaves first. Um, now, when is this important? How can this be used? Basically, when we're talking about function calls, for example, or recursion. Now, these are not the only um, use cases of or for recursion. Uh, these are not the only use cases for the stack data structure. Um, but these are the, I would say, main or most common uses of stacks. Because what we do when we call a function on a low level of programming is we save uh, once the function is finished, where do we get, uh, where do we return? So for example, you have some code here, some lines of code, and then we have a function call. And what we do is we navigate to that function, execute that function. So this is some other call here. And maybe inside of that function, we call another function, function two. And this function calls another function, or not calls another function, but has another code to be executed and so on. And once this code is executed, we have to go back to this point here. Once this code is executed, we have to go back to this point here and so on. So what we can do is we can essentially build a stack, a stack data structure. And the first thing that we add is the return point where we have to go to. So we have some code and then we call the function the first time. So what we do is we say, okay, the first layer here is the first function call. So return to that first function call once everything is done. So in the second thing here, we have another function call. So we say, okay, uh, the, the next function call is function two, return to this one once it's executed. And then maybe you have function three and so on um, until you get to the top element, until, the, uh, until you have no other function calls. And what you do then is you execute the code and then what you do is you pop the top element because you don't wanna return to this function immediately. What you wanna do is you wanna return to the last function called, to the last uh, point in your code where you call the function. And you're going to return to that, then you're going to execute it, then this element is gone, of course, because when you pop an element, it's gone, uh, it's no longer in the stack. Uh, then you do the same thing for function two, function one, and then the code proceeds. So this is what uh, basically how the stack is used. Uh, the same way, uh, it, it is the same way for recursion, essentially, because when you call recursively, you have, um, you, you always enter in the stack where you want to return to once the recursion is done, once this uh, single processing is done. 
and uh, this is why we get a uh, why we use stacks in order to uh, process function calls and recursions and this is also the reason why we get this famous error called stack overflow error now this is not only a platform where you can get uh, help with your code this is also an exception that you can get in programming which means that the stack that you have is too full you added too many things onto the stack and there's no way to put more things into the stack so you get a stack overflow error or just a stack overflow and this happens when you have too many function calls for example if i have a function that calls uh that in it calls uh in its code it calls function two here and function two just goes ahead and calls function again you have uh, all this, all this has to be put into the stack. So what you do is you say, okay, return to function to call, return to function call, return to function to call, and so on. And sooner or later, the stack will be full. In the same way, recursion, if you have a function that is uh, just this function here, and the only thing it does is calling itself, you're going to call, uh, this function is going to call itself infinitely many times, or not infinitely many times, but as many times, um, or so many times until this stack is full, basically, and overflowing. And this is the reason why you get stack overflow error once you have too many recursions or too many function calls, because the stack is too full and you cannot um, put in more uh, entry points for function calls or recursive calls. Now, when it comes to the runtime complexity of the stack, that's pretty simple, because the only two operations that we essentially have is pushing and popping, and these are very simple uh, operations because pushing is essentially just looking at the active position at the position that we are at right now in the stack and the only thing that we need to do is to push an element that's why it's done in constant time same for popping the only thing that we need to do is we need to take the active element and pop it out of the list and reshift the index reshift the pointer that points to the active element so essentially constant time as well then we also have the peak operation and the peak operation is also of course possible in constant time because we just have to look at the element peak basically means uh, you're looking at the top element without removing it so uh, it's the same as pop just that the element stays uh, inside of the stack so you don't remove it you just look at it um, yeah and essentially uh, you can also go ahead which you would usually not really do in a stack because that's not really what a stack is used for but essentially you could go ahead and access a certain position or find a certain element. So if you have a stack of values here, A, B, C, D, E, uh, you could just go ahead and say, okay, is there a D inside of my stack or something like that? And you can go look for that value, but what you need to do for that is essentially pop all the elements out of, out of the stack. Uh, in the same way, if you wanna say, I wanna have this particular position here, I wanna access this particular position, you would need to pop all the elements before that. Similar to a linked list, this means that you need to go through all the elements that are before this element. And in the worst case, this is obviously a runtime complexity that is linear because in the worst case, you have to go through all the elements until you get to the element that you're looking for. So these are the runtime complexities for a stack. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel in order to see more future videos for free. Uh, in today's video, we learned about the stack. In the next video, we're going to talk about queues and priority queues that we already talked about or briefly mentioned in this video. And then we're going to talk after that about how to implement priority queues using a data structure called heap. So this is the content for the next two videos. And yeah, that's basically for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.